that you enjoy. A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Duck Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Udic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. Story number one. The ugliest, most beautiful spacecraft. Written by publicly a lunatic. What in the void's name is a warthog? Drax asked, sure that he wasn't misunderstanding the human's words. It's kind of like a large, ugly pig, but with tusks, Captain Hale replied as he thumbed through the saute briefing on his tablet. He looked up briefly to see the mix of confusion and still envelop Drax's faces. Sorry, uh, a pig is a medium-sized mammal, bred for meat, uh, like your shins a gog, I think. Hale's expression did nothing to cure Drax's puzzlement. In fact, it might have made it worse. I still don't understand why you would name it an assault spacecraft after an ugly ground animal, especially one used for consumption. He clicked his mandibles briefly and thought. I can't think of one species that doesn't use a more majestic and dangerous animal for their vehicle's namesake. Because it's the ugliest, most beautiful spacecraft in the galaxy, Hale smirked, tacking his tablet into his flight jacket. Don't get me wrong. We have our list of dangerous and majestic names as well. The Eagle, the Raptor, the Kodiak. Hell, even the Hog's official name is the Thunderbolt 24. But no one that is ever behind the stick calls it that. Such reverence and attachment to a simple machine does not make sense, Jack chopped. They are tools, nothing more. Maybe, Hale replied. Or maybe it's the sheer concept and history behind the ship. Hundreds of cycles ago, the Warthog was originally designed around its main weapon. Some crazy bastard built a gun the size of a car that fires depleted uranium rounds the size of Coke bottles at over almost 4,000 rounds per minute. Hale chuckled with a toothy grin. And then he made the damn thing fly. They built the craft around the gun. Drax almost stuttered. Astonished at the mindset of a species that would consider such engineering. His feeling of unease was not helped with the human baring his teeth at the thought. Technically, they just welded an engine to it and strapped a seat on top. Gale shrugged. The damn thing doesn't even really need wings. They're only there to hold more bombs. Even the first space-worthy warthog was just a retrofitted Atmo shell. They have a hell of a time figuring out how to keep the damn thing stable in a low G when firing that monster. The third laws are a hell of a thing to get around when you're flinging enough hot mass into the void to saw a Zyashian cruiser in two. Drax was stunned. The sheer audacity of what the Captain Hale was saying stole whatever words he had left. He thought his assignment as military correspondent to this back galaxy, barely FTL-capable race, was going to be a wash. But this, he worried silently to himself, does the Council have any idea of the propensity to war these beings have? Hale continued, either unaware of Durax's inner turmoil, unsympathetic to it, or maybe amused by it. Luckily, now we have the mass drivers, G fields, fusion ion engines, all sorts of fun stuff. The fun part was the engineers that decided to bring the hog back from the dead. Hell, that wasn't even the goal for the project. They were tasked with designing a new gun. The details are confidential, but the gist of it is an antimatter reaction propels molten tungsten darts, encased in a mass wheel just below sea. All at over 50,000 rounds per minute. Drax blurted out, absolutely flabbergasted. A second, Hale smiled, and then the crazy bastards made it fly. End of story. Story number two of Humans and Technology, written by Eclipse Shano. To all races receiving this memo, please, for the sake of everyone's sanity, do not give the humans any more tech. I repeat, do not share technological secrets with humanity. Do not even let them look at the technology at work. The same applies to any of their allies who feed into this addiction for technology, especially the Ravani. What could be so bad about the humans experimenting with new technology? I hear you ask. Well, let's go over some of the highlights, shall we? 
First came the genetic altercation equipment that they gained from the Aetherians. Now, what's so bad about that? They used it to find the cure for one of the most deadly diseases. Cancer. Well, uh, after that, and presumably after drinking several brain-inhibiting poisons, human scientists decided to alter various Earth-based animals. Attempted to give them elemental properties. Only leading to minor electrical manipulation, psionics, and poisons. And then, uh, genetically domesticated them to follow their orders of their owners. Coupled with quantum storage technology gained after their war with the Tedian Empire, and now they are storing these elemental creatures in orb-shaped storage dimensions and using them for warfare. That's not given to the idiotic decision to try and revive and genetically domesticate some of their mythological monstrosities, such as dragons, then using them in warfare. Then came their modifications with themselves. As if the hairless apes could get any more ridiculous, some gave themselves a prehensile tail with which they could use to load guns, hold guns, and yes, shoot them. Some humans uh, gave themselves some form of hemophilia and large wings reminiscent of Earth creature known as Corruptora, or as the humans call them, bats. They seemed to restrict themselves on such modification due to internal conflicts involving these mutants and various failed experiments. Then came the material storage and reuse equipment, frequently used to scrap destroyed ships and build or repair others. The humans used this to go and absorb an entire asteroid belt, then proceeded to build asteroids with FTL engines that were full of explosives, then proceeded to launch these asteroids into enemy fleets, causing massive damage. Especially when these... Uh, Asteroids happened to detonate within the ship. Humans seemed to have an overwhelming lust to turn any technology or new piece of equipment into a weapon of mass destruction. For a race that claims to want to come in peace, they seem all too capable of violence and have an unnatural knack for killing in rather unorthodox ways. Of course, the humans have not yet declared any offensive wars. For most of their wars, they were either the target of another's aggression or were wars of retaliation against being attacked by a proxy of another empire. But the point still stands. Humans, perhaps through their own survival instincts, will find a way to kill with anything that they can get their hands on. When we had introduced them to our point-connected transit machines, the humans proceeded to not use it for the streamlining the assembly lines like we had, but instead they made handheld versions which they used to connect the ground below the enemy soldiers to the side of a tall cliff. In other cases, humans have been known to connect the ground to a ceiling and then tread any angled surface and launch various objects, with a rather alarming bit of accuracy if they knew exactly where it would land or explode. When pressed about why they did this, the answer was received was, um, because it's funny. Sure, later on they used it for interplanetary and intergalactic transit of parts from one factory to other factories. But the first thing they did with the technology was kill. With advancements in hologram technology and psionics, they made physical holograms, which they would of course use as training dummies for the soldiers. These dummies had physical presence through telekinesis forming a sort of personal field around the hologram and could be interacted with. When being invaded, they used their holograms as soldiers in brazen white armor, their armor clashing against any camouflage unless it was on a snowy planet, to which they proceeded to have black armor. The dummies were used as shields the humans would hide behind, blocking incoming enemy fire but allowing the human soldiers to shoot through them. Now, for the secrets, the Rivali shown their new close friends. Their relationship began when the Rivali and the humans learning about the other's biological systems. As it turns out, the Rivali could also benefit from the humans' adrenaline, and vice versa. The humans could attain a rather concentrated, focused state of being from the Rivali and algnosis. This could be considered the Rivali's counterpart to adrenaline. But unlike adrenaline, then algnosis puts them into a trance-like state where the Rivali has enhanced spatial awareness and their senses were heightened. Humans would often refer to that state as being in the zone, 
Combining the two led to the most deadly combination, as the users executed feats of precision and strength beyond what the simulations projected. Human Revali hybrids exhibit signs of having both glands and could achieve even greater results than the parental race. Of course, the Revali were not done there. To further strengthen their bond with a new favorite ally, they showed the humans their plasma cutters, capable of being wrapped around the most resilient of materials, then cutting it cleanly in half. The humans then built plasma-based swords and combined them with the Revali's reflector shield technology to create a plasma blade that could not only cut through a hull of a battleship, but also deflect incoming plasma and laser fire. Many humans, especially human scions, seemed to flock towards the new weapons and used it in conjunction with psionics. They seemed almost enthralled with the new weapon, and yes, they attached them to the ends of the rifles as any other blade they had. Just to continue adding to the human's addiction to new shiny toys to play with, the Rivali introduced them to the neural uplink technology, allowing them to remotely control various machines or specifically augmented creatures. The humans took their precious dragons and did the unthinkable. No, they did not fornicate with them. No, far, far worse. The humans took these massive flying war creatures and made cybernetic augmentations for them, altered the creature's nervous system to be more closely comfortable with the neural uplink, removed any need for respiration, and made them able to resist stress of FTL travel, attached FTL propulsion systems to them, and lastly, of course, added guns. Lots of guns to their dragons. Attached on a stasis pod with a neural uplink and a few oxygen tanks, and now a pilot with a specialized suit could control their dragons directly. There are many more examples of humans taking new technology and proceeding to change things around and experiment until they found a way to do whatever they feel like with it. But all that would take a library's worth of notes to expand upon. So once again, to all spacefaring races, don't introduce humans to new technology. The Galactic Council already has its hands full trying to regulate the nonsense humans have already done. We don't need more instances of human imagination anymore. Sincerely, High Counselor Magarak. Sincerely, High Counselor Magarak of the Calivian Empire. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope 